right then, that was even better than what I was thinking of doing, but uh... Yeah, salutations peoples of outside space. I am Celestial Saturn and here I am with another dating sim. I kind of see that there is a pattern going on, but I thought that this would be a little more interesting to play. So we're playing Validate. Honestly, I just saw someone like post about this on Twitter and was kind of curious of how this is going to be. But uh, apparently this is more of an LGBTQ type of dating sim. So it never hurts to, to go and look around, you know? And I really do like this music though, listen to that. You have to love the chill music, like no matter what. There's never a bad time for some pretty chill music. Uh, let's see. Uh, can I start a date? Can I load a date? And they apparently give you a lot of dates. Hey, go away, go away. I like the transitions. The whole, like, pop comic thing so far, very nice. All right, let's start. So I can be Malik Patterson, a manager at Bow Pies. <laughs> uh, 26, goes by he, him, he's gone in. Men stay in touch with the girls they should never have cheated on and get mad when they file a restraining order. And a trash ass mixtape, kill your producer. Oh my god. <laughs> okay then. So we can pick this person or Inaya, Saf Inaya Saifi. She's Pakistani, goes by she and they. A food scientist. I'm loving those buttons. Uh, the original croissant dropper. <laughs> Stem blogger during the height of 2014. Bumbler. And they say blocking is the best day to win an argument, but that's just cowardice talking. Okay, so Inaya and Malik. Hmm. Honestly, Malik kind of reminds me more of my brother uh, for reasons I cannot really get into. I mean, like, he looks alright. He looks pretty cool, but I, I'm going with Anaya. I don't know. They're kind of awesome. So let's see how this goes. Body image. Oh, so we're meeting them. Okay. Welcome to the Naya's Noms, a cooking show that is a lot less cute than the title might suggest. Okay. We're slaves to the algorithm here, boys and girls. <laughs> Today we're going to be making a basic ass tomato sauce. Because some of the questions I got after last week's pine a la vodka were absolutely ungodly. We really have to work our way from square one here. But before we do anything, I want to draw your attention to this. The overhead light in your kitchen sends streaks of sweat running down between your shoulder blades. You gotta wrap this one up fast. You point a finger at the corner of your mouth with a flourish. Your hands smell like rosemary and tap water. <laughs> All right then, so I'm cooking and I'm watching this person and following their recipe. That's, that's something I will probably do. This, this strange and alien marking on my face, it is a zit. 
It is admittedly nasty, but it's not cancerous and it's not herpes. If I see one smug motherfucker in the comments calling it herpes, I swear to God. Oh, so this is going to be a game that I'm going to actually have to censor if I want to put it on YouTube. I like you already. I just thought I'd draw attention to it before any of you jokers got any ideas. Moving on. People keep telling me the penne a la vodka is bland. I got some of the same shit on my chili recipe a couple of months ago too. Listen, this is basic. Sometimes I forget that all of you are like tiny babies who need your hands held all the way through everything. Don't choke on your pacifiers while I chop this garlic. Subtly insulting. You went internally. That might have been a little much. Your brand is irrelevant. Scorn. Definitely, but you should have saved that one to run past Alex. He's your test audience of bitches who have never cooked a thing in their lives. Yeah. But I subscribe. I'm fine with being insulted on my cooking skills because I know I can't cook for shit either. You've got to bloom spices with heat, okay? That's how you bring out the flavor. That's why garlic always goes in first. It's going to taste like shit if you don't activate it. Cooking is 100% chemistry. I know I say that constantly, but it's true. You glance at the page views. Ugh, that's about half as many as you got for your last video. You don't usually check analytics while you're alive. You're not a complete amateur, but you really aren't feeling it today. Hence the low-hanging fruit herpes joke. True, you do have a nasty sit by your mouth, and true, some asshole is absolutely going to comment on it, but it would probably have been better just to cover it with makeup. Whatever. It's over now. No point in agonizing over it. You'll burn yourself. You settle into all of autopilot chopping and sauteing and talking the whole time. You can make this tomato sauce in your sleep. You've done it so many times. Throughout undergrad, you mostly lived on pasta and eggs. Not together. Well, sometimes together. You keep up a steady stream of bullshit through the video, babbling about the weather, the pair of running shoes you busted open the other day, and the last terrible Star Wars movie. That's gonna get some people heated. People always want to know your opinions on media or they think they do until they actually hear them. Then they often want to return to blissful ignorance. Scroll, your opinions are great. The public are just weak and foolish. They will never survive the winter. Eh, Harry Pitts. Not my cup of tea, but hey, if you got him, you got him. You succumb to another moment of weakness and glance at the chat. Pluck your eyebrows. Hey, screw you. Oh my god, I thought I was the only one thinking that. I figured I was being rude, but she needs to. The light above might as well be the sun beating down on your back. Sweat drips into your eyes. Is this the hottest summer on record? Why are you cooking over a even hotter stove? idiotic she would be so cute if she tried lol okay yeah toxic socks needs to be booted it's it's in the same vein as you would be much prettier if you smiled if it's not something that can be fixed within like 10 seconds don't ever comment on it like that should be a good rule to follow if she's happy with the way she looks, then she's happy with the way she looks. It's, she's not here to, to be something for you. She's the goddess of that temple and she dresses it the way she likes. It's to appease the god within, not the damn follower. Leave her alone. 
You toss the pasta into the boiling water. It hisses and spits, burning the back of your hand. You want to hiss back, but you hide it from the camera. You finish up the pasta and end the live stream. Phoning it towards the end here. Who cares? Hardly anyone was watching this one. It's just been too hot to put in any effort into anything. You signed off with a next week ice cream. Or maybe just ice. Hold the cream. I'm gonna crawl into the fucking freezer and you can all come and find my body. Peace! I like her. You taste the sauce. Ugh, terrible. Nothing you make in your lives is ever edible. It's wild. Even if you follow every step perfectly, exactly how you would do it in your own, it never turns out right. Something about the pressure of fame sours everything. You slam dunk the whole thing right into the garbage. Your phone is blowing up when you finally get back to it. You keep it on silent through recording unless there's a specific bit you want to do checking up on the world news, or reading an embarrassing reply. You have a wall of Instagram notifs, a couple of bitter follows, and of course, Alex has notes for you. Ha, <laughs> Instagram. Ooh, that's Alex. Alex is cute. I hope you two are like together, seriously. You two would make such a cute couple. <laughs> Fueled by spite. I'm gonna have to start looking into the people that made this because I need this pen. Wow, you really on your bullshit decay. Alex Reza, tech bro job, and Naya's manager and professional best friend. Aw, they're not together. Thanks, I try. That wasn't a compliment. <laughs> oh, this is, I know I'm just all out of juice. I don't have a single comeback in me. It's so fucking hot in here. Turn your AC on, idiot. That costs money, man. Okay, I am really loving your pins. No, I will not. It's expensive and I'm ethically opposed to it. You are me. You are like literally me. Ooh, you must be upset. One person running their AC occasionally is not gonna make a difference in global climate change. I swear to you. It barely even works. It's just a window model. Better than nothing. You need a new one. It's not like you can't afford it. Also, I like how they have the phone in the middle for the little split between the screens. That's cool. They will put some thought into this. I'll consider it. You won't though, not a chance. And if you try to explain why, Alex will just call you an edgelord, which, okay, maybe you are, but that's beside the point. Just the idea of turning on the AC when it's not necessary just absolutely disgusts you. It's like taking an elevator when the stairs work just as well. It's why you never buy pre-shredded cheese when it's perfectly acceptable to just shred your own. You're not a Luddite. Obviously technology doesn't scare you. You're an Instagram influencer. You just have some lines in the sand. I'll let you know when I'm done going through the comments. I won't be able to get to it before tonight. I've got a deadline. Someone's sick, so I need to write a feature. It's fine, I can go through them myself. Uh-huh. 
No fucking way. You might be the type to start a flame war against somebody. We talked about this and that is one of the things you're not going to do. What has she done? Ooh, if there are some hard lines of what of a yes and a no like this, there's a good story behind it. You signed that contract. Nice. He's right. You did sign it. Fine. Nice. Ooh, nice, nice apartment. Tap out the answer and toss the phone down on the couch. You toss yourself down after it and then struggle out of your clothes as much as you can, letting your overalls hang down loose. The overhead fan needs to be turned off while you're filming, but you slap it back on, sighing as it cools the damp patches on your neck and forehead. You raise your arms over your head so I can get to your bed. Oh, that's that just keeps reminding me of of my childhood going to my grandma over the summer. She never had air conditioning. That fan was a lifesaver. Oh, I miss it. Uh, you need to clean up the kitchen and yourself. You don't remember the last time you washed your hair. Initially, working from home had been such a tempting prospect. And you've been so absolutely certain that you weren't going to turn out to be one of those suckers who needs a rigid capitalist structure to keep them on task. Well, surprise, bitch, we all need that structure. And generally, you don't. You're just pretty bad at showering if you aren't going to see another human. In combination of the heat, your bad mood, and the unappealing prospect of washing the dishes sends you into an unsettled doze. And when you wake up, you're actually even sweatier than before. The nap was long enough for you to feel like your soul has left your body, but not enough for you to feel at all rested. You're stuck with a very clear memory of a time in your childhood when you'd been at home with a fever, sleeping all through the day, waking up in the non-committal gray light of either evening or very early morning. You asked your younger sister, who shared your room, if it was to May, today, or tomorrow. And she, comically stricken in only the way the very young can be, responded, I don't know. Your phone vibrates again and you realize that you, that woke you up. You fumble it upright and accept the call before you even really take the time to think about it. If you've been more awake, you would have left it the voicemail. Oh, mama. That is definitely your mother. Hi, mom. Uh-oh. Ayane Saifi, scheduler and Inaya's mom. Naya, are you sleeping? Hmm? It's too early to sleep. Aren't you going out? It's Friday. I wasn't sleeping. You struggle upright and grope around for your laptop to check the time, annoyed that your only time telling device is currently being utilized for communication. Incredibly insensitive of your mom to insist she's calling you like it's 2005, but she hates texting. You kind of hate it too. It's just the only way to keep in contact with anyone. How's work? I haven't watched your last few videos. I wish your audience didn't swear so much. You swear? Yes, but I don't swear at my daughter, do I? Assholes are just part of the business. And I don't go through the comments anymore. I hired someone to do that for me. So, I don't care what they say. You pay someone for that? A hey friend, he needs the work. That's nice of you. Is he in school? Why do you care? Well, he doesn't want to be a professional comment checker forever, does he? He's in the same culinary program I was in, and he got his own parents to, to get on his ass. You're right, it's none of my business. Point taken.
That wasn't... You squeeze your eyes shut. You're too exhausted to fight about nothing. Did you call for something specific? I was just about to take a shower. Oh, I was just going through... I was just going through the dire situation in my closet. I haven't cleaned it out in almost a decade. Can you believe it? Your father always gets so annoyed when I move things around. I was wondering if you'd like me to send you anything before I donate it to charity. My things are so nice, but I'm a little too old for them. You mean like dresses? I don't think any of them would fit me. You're skinnier than you were the last time I saw you though, aren't you? I've been keeping an eye on your head book. This conversation needs to be over. I don't think... Just send me pictures. I'll take a look. She isn't going to let it go. Better just let her send you some stuff and then throw it in the back of the closet. You hang up before your mom can get another long-winded explanation of why it's so important that you take all of her old shit. She's got a bunch of traditional clothes that you've never seen her wear. But insists on keeping. Like a little piece of Pakistan wrapped up carefully and set under glass. You hope she doesn't want you to take any of it. You lay back down on the couch on the opposite end to avoid your sweat marks staring up at the ceiling fan until you feel yourself start to go cross-eyed. You pick up your phone. You've got a new message. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm going through the comments. They're not good, are they? Ooh. Wow, I know I say I'm a prison abolitionist, but my God, I want to send your sims to jail. Let's go out. What? I thought you wanted me to do this as fast as possible. Actually, that was a decision that past Anaya made, and past Anaya is an idiot. Present Anaya is smart and wants a beer. <laughs> well, hell, okay. If you're driving. Ooh, achievement unlock, can't stay there. And it was on Discord. Of course it's on Discord. That, that is cool. That, that That is cool. So it's just going through everybody's lives. Oh. New struggling single in your area. Yolanda? Okay, I like her. Let's see who Yolanda is. Drugs and ableist language. At least they give you a content warning. Alex pulls up to your door exactly on time, down to the minute. He always honks when he arrives instead of texting like a normal person. You're waiting for him by the door, but you keep scrolling through bitter for another 30 seconds to indicate you dislike being honked at like you are walking past the construction site in booty shorts. A sunroof is open and Alex's 2001 haunt at Toyota. Carry cigarette smoke, gilded blue in the streetlights. It got dark while you were waiting. Guess that makes it a moonroof. Alex leans out of the window, sunglasses pushed up and perched on a blurry mop of silver hair. Wearing your sunglasses at night? Alex pops the lock and you slide into the passenger seat. Fuck you, the sun was setting into my eyes. Where are we going? It's a surprise. I hate surprises. Oh, I know. You smack your hand away from the radio. Driver picks the music. That's right, don't mess with the radio. Ah, 
boy, I wonder where we're going. At first you think Alex is lost and needs and needs somewhere to, to idle and pull up directions on his phone. He turns off the car. You look from the sign to Alex and back again. Are you trying to send me subliminal messages? I'm not cutting my hair. Yeah, absolutely. I brought you in for a surprise and makeover at nine on a Friday night. You joke, but you did bring me to a salon at nine on a Friday. Is this a drug deal? Isn't we legal here? Are we getting meth? What have you been doing, woman? Inaya? How does one make meth? Uh... Snort it? Come on. Despite your distaste of makeover montages, you follow Alex out of the car and around the building. The back parking lot is a totally different scene. The salon looks closed, but around the back, there's an entrance with a wrought iron railing wrapped with fairy lights and a gaggle of people standing around talking and smoking. All of them dressed way cooler than you are. The person working the door greets Alex by name, giving you a brief glance before letting you inside. It definitely smells like a salon, hairspray and breach, but the back of the room has been turned into a low performance space complete with makeshift stage and mood lighting. The girl is selling beers out of a cooler in the corner and a couple of guys in roly black are setting up a sound system. You sit at a small round table and Alex buys you a drink. The place isn't huge and it's filling up fast. You have no idea something like this was here. You don't go to salons, you haven't cut your hair in years. Do a bunch of shops in town have places like this? Is there like a fucking cabaret going on in the back of Lawn Depot? You really are being weird. I noticed it on the phone. Oh, what do you mean? I brought you to what is very clearly a slam poetry event and you haven't made one snide comment. Clearly, you are a fake Inaya. The real Inaya is lying knocked out in her apartment. You must have stolen her overalls. You're so absolutely not going to take this from a curly hair bitch. Oh, I love this. So catty. I don't know what I've even done to give you the impression that I think that I'm too good for slam poetry. When have I ever said that? Don't answer that. Your whole vibe is the vibe of a person who slams, who finds slam poetry deeply cringe. Slam poetry is deeply cringe. Alex makes a gesture with his beer that says case and point. You rub at your forehead. If you were so convinced I wouldn't enjoy it, why did you bring me? Alex shrugs. What? You thought I was going to change my Friday night plans just for you? The little smile hovering around the mouth of his beer lets you know he's joking. Dickhead. Just so you know, I'm actually way more cool and open-minded now. Oh yeah? When did this happen? Just now. I decided I'm open to new experiences. I'm doing intense, irrefutable character growth as we speak. And there's no chance I'm ever going to regress into bad habits. Oh, well, that's a relief. Uh, this can only go either very uphill or very, very, very downhill from here. Like, for instance, I didn't complain when you brought me a fucking IPA. I'm drinking it, okay? I'm drinking a beer that tastes like a whole ass flower garden in the name of my broadening of broadening my horizons. <gasps> yeah, you deserve the Nobel Peace Prize. I was thinking some kind of cultural reward. Or like a literature award. Newberry Medal for great character growth. For drinking bad beer and participating in the corniest public activity known to man. Here are a couple of words 
from the end of your manic monologue when the lights go down and conversation cuts off abruptly, leaving you speaking loudly while everyone else goes quietly. Corniest folly activity known to man echoes out across the room like a fart in a bathtub. I would have gotten up and walked away at that point. I, I would have gone. I would have left. Sully, every cool person in the salon is looking at you, the asshole, the sloppy bitch in the overalls, and scraggly hair. Here to talk shit. <laughs> yep. It's time for you just to stand up and exit. Just run. You should probably leave now. You should probably melt into your competent parts, a liquid of carbon-based life form. Oh, now I have a choice. Pretend it didn't happen or laugh it off. Ooh. I, mm, why did you, why did you sit there and give me public embarrassment? Big bum. I hate public embarrassment. Ooh. Uh, pretend it didn't happen. Alex the bastard is holding back laughter. He did this to you on purpose. You don't know how he managed it, but he did. Maybe this is his performance art. Despite the melodrama in your head, people lose interest in you pretty fast. None of them look that mad. What you said could probably be interpreted in a bunch of different ways. You just have anxiety. Yes, I do, and I would have ran. Everyone's focus shifts to the woman coming on stage, and you do not blame them in the least. She's pretty. High cheekbones, big, striking eyes, a quiet self-assurance radiating from every motion. She adjusts the mic stand, shakes out her braids, and leans in to speak. Aw, oh, you're so cute. Hey, everybody. Hope it's going good out there. The light's in my eyes, so I can't really see shit, but I'm going to assume it's great. That gets a murmuring laugh from the audience. Whoever she is, she's popular. Oh, her hat changes with the mood. Yes. Look at that smile. Look at that happy face. That is adorable. For those of you who don't know, I'm Yolanda, owner of Dispute Salon and founder of Jerky, a Jersey City Slam. A weekly free evening of poetry and music. If someone charged you a cover fee, sorry, but you got scammed. The crowd laughs again. Clearly, this is a running joke that you're not in. On despite what you said to Alex, you do think it's a little shitty of him to bring you to a place where he knows everyone and you know no one. Okay, okay, this is adorable. This is super cute and she's into fish. Not that you really have that many friends offline. Whatever. recording this section because when I was editing it apparently corrupted bad for like the last half hour of the game so pretty much I'm just starting back over on this section and going to clip it onto the back of it yeah like we end up missing a whole lot of dialogue and content because of the the sound there was a sound issue but yeah I'm I'm gonna continue back with this I still love her fish. Hey everybody. I hope it's going good out there. The lights in my eyes are so I can't really see shit. So, but I'm going to assume it's great. That gets a murmuring laugh from the audience. Whoever she is, she's popular. For those of you who don't know, I'm Yolanda, owner of the Dispute Salon and founder of the Jersey City Slam, a weekly free evening of poetry and music. If someone charged you a cover fee, sorry, but you got scammed. The crowd laughs again. Clearly, this is a running joke that you're not in on. 
Despite what you said to Alex, you don't think it's a little shitty of him to bring you to a place where he knows everyone and you know no one. Not that you really have that many friends online. Whatever. All of that talk about character development was just blowing smoke up his ass, but it's probably not a bad idea. You could stand to be a little more open-minded. To that end, you attempt polite focus as applause greets the end of Yolanda's intro and the studio lights darken. It's surprisingly not terrible. Definitely not something you come to by yourself and you're not sure if you come back, but the talent here is high enough that it isn't excruciating. There's a couple singer-songwriter type acts, some decent freestyle rappers. Even if the crowd gets too rowdy for you to parse every word, some of the poetry is good too, if a little dramatic for your taste. Towards the end of the set, the lights go down even further. You're on your second beer, just chilling, when Yolanda gets back up on the stage. The crowd applauds harder for her than they have for anyone else. She is definitely popular. Hey y'all, I've got a new one for you tonight. Aren't poetry people supposed to snap? Huh? You know, snap your fingers so people can hear the poetry. I don't think anyone actually does that. Well, Maybe they should. They should start it. You're welcome to snap if you want to. N no, we have to snap together if it's just one of us. Shh. Anyway, yeah, here we go. Hopefully this one hits and isn't... Her eyes flick briefly in your direction. Yeah, you better feel bad about that. You're back to wanting to sink into the floor. Alex snorts. You elbow him the shoulder. We need to have a talk about what loving and supporting your socially maladjusted friend actually means. Because it sure as hell isn't this. But then the lights go down and Yolanda starts to speak. And it's like flipping a switch. The audience might still be making noise. You honestly have no idea. At this point, you should you could be hit by a 10-foot wave and you wouldn't even notice you were wet. It's not the words to the poem, though they're pretty good to your amateur ear. Dark shapes moving through a bright day and leaving no shadows. That sort of imagery. And it's not the way she looks either, although she looks good. There's something in the way she speaks. Clear annotation to her words, a cadence to her gestures. It's confidence, but it is also the opposite of that. Indifference? She has something to say and she's going to say it, even if no one is listening. If Yolanda were performing to an empty room, she'd give the same energy, the same calm assurance that her words have value. To someone like you, ever fidgeting and vamping, trying not to look at viewer accounts, ignoring vicious comments from out of the corner of your eye, aware that it's only a matter of time before someone comes along and tears all the success out of your hands and scatters it to the wind. It's humbling to say the least. Her performance winds down, but she maintains intensity all the way through. When she's finished and the lights come out, you sit in thunderstruck silence as everyone else around you applauds politely. That would technically be love at first sight, but um, she's experiencing something new that hit her in a way she didn't expect. So, yep. 
you might manage to put your hands together a couple of times. There's no way you've had only two beers. Where's the fucking ABV on this bottle? Mm, that was amazing. It comes out breathy and squeezed. You don't think you got any air at all through that entire performance. Beside you, Alex is texting. What? Oh yeah, she's really good. Were you even watching? What? Yeah, I mean, I've seen this one before. She said it was a new one. Yeah, well, all of her poems blend together. Wow. I didn't mean it in a bad way. I mean, she's doing like a themed book of poetry or something. You should ask her about it. Holy shit, you should. It didn't occur to you to go up and talk to her? Your everyday interaction with people is through a screen. Only way to show your appreciation is to like, comment, and subscribe. You shouldn't get pissy at Alex for not being moved by Yolanda's performance. You aren't an artist, but you're close enough to understand not everything resonates with everyone who hears. On the other hand, you don't want to be the only asshole who got knocked on the floor by a pretty girl saying a poem in the back of a hair salon. And, oh fuck, she's coming over here, isn't she? Hey, Alex, glad you could make it. Londa, you were fantastic. Alex's phone immediately goes into his pocket whenever she walks over. He might be a shitty audience member, but he's not a complete dickhead. Why are you being so rude about him in your head right now? Alex is cool. He's put up with your bullshit for years. Thanks, I was a little worried about that one. Honestly, I didn't think it would vibe with the room. You killed it. Oh, by the way, this is Inaya. I pulled her out of her cave for the night. Was that a joke because of my hairy arms? Hi. She thought you were great. Hi, I thought you were great. Yolanda laughs, looking between the two of you like she's trying to figure you out. That's fine, you're unfigure outable. Hey, thanks. She smiles at you, and you wish you had something else to say, but you know literally nothing about poetry. You can't even fucking remember if it rhymed. Before you can freak, a very tall woman walks up to your seat. Hey, Yo-Yo, I gotta go. You good? Zara, the hairstylist and Yolanda's co-worker. Uh, I guess? Where's Mariah? She left. She needed to get the last bus. Oh... I thought it ran until midnight on Fridays. I have no idea. Maybe I misunderstood her. Just, I gotta get this place put away before tomorrow. I really have to go. Yolanda starts fidgeting with one of her braids. For a moment, you think her fingers are shaking as if fear, as if from fear or exhaustion, but her demeanor is so calm you might be mistaken. I've been working for 12 hours, Sarah. I know, I know. But my brother's about to get off work and I'm not gonna let him walk home this time of night. Right, right, of course. Go, I'll figure something out. It might be the beers. You still haven't found out the damn ABV, but you catch a glimpse of Londa's mask slipping. It's nothing radical, she just looks tired. Exhausted? She looks the way you do after a full day of live streaming and tearing apart your kitchen. 
before you take the time to think about it, um, I can help you. Uh-huh. Oh, fuck. Now you have to commit to it. I can help you clean the place up if you want. I mean, great kudos on you for offering up help. I mean, like, you still have to mean it, not just offer it out of politeness. Because any help would be great, greatly appreciated with many people. But, like, if you don't have the drive to do it, you might hinder instead of help. Why? Again, still love this fishy hat. You weren't prepared for this question. You were expecting a polite refusal, since you are a complete stranger and had only been half serious. See what I mean? It's a free country, right? Uh, I guess. I'm not sure where your point is. I don't have a point, really. Yolanda stares at you a couple of seconds before smiling hesitantly. Sure. Appreciate it. Come find me when the people clear out, okay? I gotta go small talk a little bit more. She dressed the people milling around the stage, throwing you a brief glance over her shoulder. Hey, I can't stay late enough to pick for you to pick up shakes with your incredible room straightening skills or whatever. I got work in the morning. I'll just get an Uber. Uber spelled what two O's, not you. So you guys can't be mad at it. What? Why are you looking at me like I've got food all over my face? Well, you've got something on your face, but I was ignoring it because you told me to on Instagram. Oh, your zit. You elbow him. I'm not used to you being impulsive. That's all. Whatever. It's not like I have anything else to do. It's either that or sitting at home and posting. You love sitting at home and posting. Well, it's not good for my brain. Don't worry about me. You're not my real dad. You get Alex to leave with a bit more coaxing and as soon as he's gone, you wish he hadn't. You needed the phone charger from his car. You're at 30%. You need a phone to get home tonight. Shit. You're so bad with this whole going out and doing things element of life. So why bother? Yeah, put your phone on airplane mode and wait for the place to clear out. You keep walking up. You keep waking up your screen and navigating to bitter before remembering you don't have any signal. It's practically a nervous tick. The boomers are right. You really do be on that phone. Luckily, now that the beers are sold out, people start to leave. And then it's just you and Yolanda and the mood lighting. She's counting cash from the makeshift bar with quick practice flicks of her fingers, stacking the bills in neat piles. Then she stands over the cash box, head bowed like she's praying or thinking or resting her eyes. You get the sudden impulse to part her hair and get a look at the nape of her neck, an intensely creepy thought to have. She straightens up and whatever spell she's cast is broken. Hey, thanks again for staying. She's back to politely energetic. She doesn't need to put on her customer service act for you. You live stream. You know what people look like when they're performing. But you don't know her at all. What are you gonna say? Relax? No problem, is there anything specific you need me to do? Can you stack the chairs? Not too high, three or four in a stack. 
Got it. Yes, I can definitely do that. You stack chairs. You only knock your elbow into one a couple of times and you only drop one twice. Did two beers do this to you? You're a little lady. I resent that, man. After you're done with the chairs, you sweep and take out the trash. <sighs> you hate doing chores, but this was way less awful than doing them in your own apartment. Maybe because you weren't the one to make the mess in the first place. Yeah, that's a weird psych psychological thing. It's like, if it's your mess, you really don't want to do it. But if it's someone else's mess, and like you're helping out, you have a, you're a little more willing. Or if you're going to go ahead and do it anyway, the moment someone tells you to do it, you want to just drop everything and say no. Why clean up when you're just going to get everything messy again? Clutter doesn't bother you like it bothers most people. It drove your mom crazy. When did you start writing poetry? Get to know you. So, when did you start writing poetry? Huh? She looks at you with a such a strange expression that you wonder if you commit some intense poet faux pas. Sorry, I didn't mean to make like first date small talk. I was just wondering. I liked your poem a lot. Come on, Anaya. You already said that. Yolanda smiles again, looking slightly relieved, like she was worried you were trying to catch her in a lie. Oh, I don't even really remember. I've been scribbling stuff down since I could write, I think. I used to carry notebooks with me everywhere I went. I mean, I still do that, but I use the notes on my app. And, ugh, I use the notes app on my phone too. <laughs> well, I've never written a poem in my life. I mean, I guess I've written a roses are red, violets are blue type of poem, but that's it. Yolanda shrugs. To be honest, anyone who can write poetry, well, anyone can write poetry. She says it like she's had this conversation before. A lot of people must tell her about their dog shit poetry. What else do you say to a poet? Probably not everyone. There are so many people who barely have a personality. Yolanda laughs, one loud ha. I know, that's right. Man, I don't mean to be rude or anything, like, this is a safe space, you know? I don't want people to feel like they can't come here and be their true, authentic selves. But some people's authentic selves are boring. Yolanda closes the cash box and comes over to hold the dust can for you. You sweep a cocktail of dust, bottle caps, and little bits of plastic. We used to get this one girl pretty young like 21 or 22 and she'd always show up and just do these crazy long poems about the same dude he sounded really weird like he had birds way too many birds wait she talked about this guy's birds in her poem god yeah literally in every piece maybe he cheated on her with a toucan yeah, she didn't last that long, but I think about her all the time. Wherever you are, bird girl, I hope you're doing good. Pour one out for bird girl. <laughs> the two of you finished the cleanup, and now that you've bonded over making fun of some random girl's terrible poetry, Yolanda has warmed up to you. Not that you think she just super likes mocking people. It's more that complaining can always bring people together. Yeah, misery loves company. And if you can talk shit about misery, you're going to have the company. Back in college, the single easiest way to start up a conversation was bitching. 
about the syllabus, the professor, the long distance between buildings and campus. You used to be good at making friends. You're not sure what happened. You grew up, moved away. It happens. It happened with me. It happened with my friends. Sometimes we just do a happy birthday on Facebook. Damn, I haven't seen most of them in like two or three years. Enough about me. You kept snatching glances at her while you worked. Not to sound fake deep, but ever since you were a teenager, you've only been attracted to people you were intellectually stimulated by. Uh, you hate hearing how that sounds even in your own brain. Like you're one of those sapiosexual dudes, but it's true. Celebrities, sure, you can be attracted to them for their looks or their charisma, but in real life, it's always been difficult to connect unless they were interest interesting. Isn't that like what demisexuals are? Maybe that's not weird. Maybe it's normal. You don't have much basis for comparison. Yolanda isn't your type, but that's because you don't have a type. You have a list of attributes you pick and choose from to, per to form the perfect human, like a builder bear workshop, but with someone you wanted to date. Yeah. The type, but the type that you like is not always the type that you end up with. It's just like, like she said, like it's a, it's a character build. It's the, it's something that you would prefer, but it's not always what you're attracted to. You like the idea. You like the concept, but you don't really want that person. Uh, you mean it in a way that doesn't sound like a super villain, though. The point is, you wouldn't be attracted to Yolanda if you haven't heard her poem. But you did, so now you are. And now that that door is open, you're catching glimpses of her other good qualities. You just don't want to put your all into someone that you don't know. You actually want to make an effort and a getting to know you type of situation so you can at least like feel out if you if there was even a spark of attraction. You hope she didn't see you looking at her ass. And when in doubt, it always comes back to the ass. She's way out of your league. You, with your Instagram cooking show and your unplucked eyebrows, your baggy overalls and unstyled hair. She owns a salon. You're surprised she let you hang out for this long. Which is why when the two of you finish up and she asked if you want to come over to her place, it knocks you out. No problem if not. I just know you mentioned you wanted to charge your phone. And I live basically upstairs. Right, right. She's being polite. Makes sense. Well, you don't need to be home at a reasonable hour. Tomorrow is the weekend and you work at home for yourself, which means it's always the weekend, but more depressing. Yeah. You shrug. Sure, why not? I can jump out of a window if I need to. Also, I, I still love her fish. Yolanda's apartment is nice and it looks about the way you expected it to. You check out the small stack of books on the side table while Yolanda goes to her room to grab her phone charger. It's all poetry books. Alice Walker, June Jordan, Jupiter Hammond. Maya Angelou's the only one with a name that you recognize though you haven't actually ever read anything by her. She was just in the water through a lot of undergrad. I actually have read Maya Angelou and it was in high school. Like, yeah, definitely pick up one of her books. It's, it's very interesting. Yolanda comes back with the charger and a little baggie. You smoke? Not really. I used to, but I'm not actually that good at it. I suck at inhaling. 
it also makes you paranoid but you don't really want to talk about that I've got edibles actually I don't smoke much either or at least I try not to yeah you don't want your apartment to stink okay you say it before you can talk yourself out of it honestly the paranoia usually isn't that bad but it's not like you're gonna do much damage here usually when you get paranoid half of it comes from doom scrolling I'm just going to do what the comedian has said if you are taking a drug and you don't really know what's in it take half you eat the gummy she offers you and sits down on the couch it's a nicer couch than yours and no doubt anyone has spent all day on it lying around sweatily Yolanda puts on some music something cool and trippy that you're neither cool nor trippy enough to recognize she sits down next to you and notices you looking at her stack of books I promise you I read them they're not just there to make me look smart uh, yeah that's legit just about every book that I own I've read or attempted to read some of them all the way through, some of them halfway through because I find another shiny book. And it isn't there to look smart, it's just I have interests and sometimes a new interest pops up while I'm trying to deal with the current one. I mean, you do. Huh? Look smart. I mean, Yolanda laughs. Oh, thanks. So do you? Hey, thanks. And that's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. Well, the nicest thing anyone has said to me today. Yolanda snorts and opens a can of La Crocs. Oh, uh, do you want one? Just people make fun of me for drinking it, so I always forget to offer. I'm good. I think La Croix tastes like a vague suggestion, but you do you. See? Everyone is so mean. Yolanda would drink La Croix. She just really seems the type. It fits her perfectly. Whatever that type is, you're not actually sure. You wonder vaguely if you're her type, but then you reason that it doesn't actually matter. But like, of course you're not. You're not really anyone's type. But of course, it doesn't matter because you don't care. That's not why you're here. Fuck. You've just been staring at her like an idiot. Uh, you good? Yeah, I was just thinking. It's actually super easy to make infused se seltzer. Like, agua fresca? Like, just sparkling water and fruit. It tastes way better than the stuff you get in cans. Not like there's anything wrong with getting stuff in cans. I should do a show on Aqua Fresca now that I'm thinking about it. A show? Oh, I have an Instagram channel where I do cooking lives. Stuff like that. You pull out your phone and bring up your page. You got a ton of comments that Alex hasn't managed to go through yet and a couple of DMs, people trying to correct your technique, calling you a bitch, or offering you bad promotional deals. Oh! She takes your phone and flicks through your gallery. Oh my god, you're that Inaya? Alex has talked about you before. He works for you, doesn't he? Kind of, yeah. He just moderates for me. I'm not like his boss or anything. I don't know why I didn't think about it before. I guess I just thought of you as Naya, cause you know, Naya's noms. Yeah. The name is stupid. It was just a joke. 
I didn't expect it to turn into a whole brand. I think it's cute. It's adorable. You're giving me the heart eyes, but your fish is giving me the heart eyes. Yeah, that's why I don't like it. Yolanda tips her head to the side, looking at you. You don't like being cute? You shrug. I mean, baby chickens are cute. Little dogs with bows in their hair are cute. Six foot tall Pakistani girls are not cute. Hmm. Sorry, I wasn't trying to like fish for compliments or anything. That just came out way too honest here. No, it's okay. Sorry if I said something to upset you. No, you didn't. It's just... I don't know. I've had a weird day. Yolanda tips her head to the side to show that she's listening. I mean, it's actually not been a weird day. It's been a totally normal day. I was stressed out at work. Then I went out and hung out with a friend at a social event. That's a normal thing to do, but it's kind of unusual for me. I don't get out much, and I definitely don't go to poetry readings, because they're corny. You went. Apologize. Sorry about that. I definitely did not mean to yell it across the goddamn room. Your extreme relief, Yolanda's smiling. It's cool, I'm just teasing. I know poetry isn't everybody's thing, and it's true a lot of amateur stuff is really fucking bad. I worry that my stuff is bad all the time. What? Are you kidding? You're fantastic. I mean, I know I just said that I don't know anything about poetry, but even I can tell that. Right. I know that I'm good, but also I worry that I just think I am. Like, I'm actually just the girl with the bird fuck- Like, am I actually just like the girl with the bird fucker boyfriend? I think I'm being real deep, but actually I'm just boring everyone with my terrible emotions. I understand that. I guess my job never really has me asking that. Because obviously there's people willing to sub and donate. So I know people like my stuff. But then that becomes the whole way I have to tell if I'm doing good, right? Like, if the subs go down, I think, well, I'm not as good as I used to be. If that makes sense. It makes sense. Blah, 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 gig economy, blah, blah. Yeah. Yolanda's hand is between the two of you on the couch. Without meaning to, you inch closer together. Wow, okay, this hadn't been the plan, but whatever. Almost without realizing what you're doing, you start tracing your fingers across the back of her hand, appreciating how slender her fingers look beneath yours. Yolanda? Inaya? Wow. You're more stoned than you thought you were. See, this is why you don't fuck with edibles. It always feels like nothing and then, like, you could communicate with squirrels that live behind your house. Still is cute. And that slow pullback from the camera makes it even better. Alright. Alright, to continue on. You kiss her before you can think better of it. 
She makes a brief noise of surprise before her mouth opens against yours and she leans into you a little. As you could have predicted, her mouth does not taste like anything because neither does LaCroix. She makes a little sigh, like capitalization, like a shrug and climbs onto your lap. She rests her hand on your shoulders almost politely. You try to remember why you started to kiss her. Why'd you even push the car down this fucking hill when you have no idea where it's gonna go? Not that you don't know what you're doing, you've hooked up with girls before, but you can see this trajectory as plain as day. You'll kiss some, maybe mess around, and then what? It'll be awkward. You're going to fuck it up. A perfectly good friendship and you're going to ruin it by starting down a road you're not prepared to drive down. Fuck. Why do you always do this? Why can't you just have casual sex like a normal fucking person? You push Yolanda to the side, roughly juggling her off your lap. What the hell? You don't have an answer for her because you don't have an answer for yourself. You thought you could get through tonight without making a total tool of yourself, but apparently even that is beyond you. You can't even make a goddamn friend anymore. Grabbing at your phone, you manage to rip the charger out of the wall and fling it halfway across the wall. I'm sorry. I have to go. I shouldn't have. I just... Sorry. You leave the way you came. Everything goes streaky blurred as you take the steps two at a time, fumbling open a rideshare app. You're crying and you don't know why. This isn't even the first time you've done something like this before. Run off like someone did something really awful to you. When the only awful thing that happened were the possibilities in your head. Out on the street, you wait for Yolanda to come after you. Not that you want her to. Well, maybe you do. Maybe you desperately want her to chase you down and ask what's wrong and hold you while you cry like this is a movie. She doesn't. God, you're so fucking stupid. That was so dramatic. You are an idiot. This edible got hands. Okay, like, since I had to basically replay this because for some reason that part of the original had, like, messed up super bad, like, sound-wise. Of course, like, replaying... Uh, this one is technically the bad ending. And the first time I actually had got the good ending. But you know what? It happens. And relationships kind of suck. It's going to always be a rough one. But this is the end of the first chapter. And hopefully I'll be able to edit and get out chapter two without much incident so like comment subscribe all those good things hopefully i'll see you in the next video folks all right sweet bye